this point, are we blaming Twilight or The Hunger Games for all these young adult movies? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Giver. The way things look and the way things are are very different. Watch. That's my father. There is no way for me to prepare you for the truth. He killed him. The young and the old are killed. For the good of all of us. There are things you don't know. You're scaring me. Go back to your family unit. It isn't my family, and neither is yours. Jonas has become dangerous. I know that there's something more, something that has been stolen. Comfortable? While we'd love to blame Twilight, Twilight sucks, it's hard not to see that The Hunger Games has a stronger influence. Whereas I Am Number 4, Beautiful Creatures, The Host, The Mortal Instruments, and Vampire Academy all had that Edward Bella vibe, this newer batch of Ender's Game, Divergent, The Maze Runner, and The Giver all lean toward Katniss and Company. Yet so far, of all the movies just listed that have already been released, only Divergent has been able to make a real dent in the box office, and even still not at the level of Twilight or The Hunger Games. Perhaps it's because those two were the originals, while everything else just comes off as a copy. And how much can Hollywood dilute Twilight and The Hunger Games before the young adult genre totally dissipates into thin air? With The Giver, another futuristic utopian society is revealed to be an evil sham by a heroic teenager, this time a dude, which totally flies in the face of current trends. And while Hollywood might love Brenton Thwaites, he's appearing in four big movies this year, he doesn't have anywhere near the fan following of Maze Runner and Teen Wolf star Dylan O'Brien. And at this point, it's not so surprising to see respected talent like Meryl Streep and Jeff Bridges taking a paycheck gig to give a young adult film some credibility and star power. Well, okay, Streep was a pretty big surprise, and likely a rare misstep for an actress who was staged to come back so brilliantly. The Giver does have two unique aspects, though, but is unable to capitalize on either. While author Lois Lowry might have dreamed up a world in black and white turned to color back in 1993 when The Giver was first published, Pleasantville was the one to introduce the idea to the masses in 1998. And while teen sensation Taylor Swift has a small role in the film, she hasn't been a noticeable part of the ad campaign. Hmm, she's either really bad or she's trying to sneak into Hollywood before her haters, who are also legion, take notice. So does this shadow of the Hunger Games have a shot at box office survival? Or is Hollywood better off looking for the next unique young adult novel, like The Fault in Our Stars? You know, this movie was a lot better than I thought it would be. And I'm also finally beginning to see what Hollywood sees in Bretton Thwaites. He was quite good here. Also, on a side note, he spends a good deal of the film with a baby, which is very unusual for American mainstream film. Usually they like to uh, support the stereotype that uh, taking care of kids and even being concerned with kids is woman's work, and men are too macho for that. Uh, if, if they had their way, they would just go off into the sunset and leave the women to for the children. So to see Bretton Thwaites so involved with this baby, uh, Gabe, uh, and risk his life for him uh, was not only uh, different, but quite touching. And the whole movie's touching, but also on a quick side note, uh, Bretton Thwaites is very similar to Andrew Garfield. And considering Andrew Garfield's lack of success with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then benching the third entry uh, until 2018, uh, if any Hollywood producer who might have been considering Andrew Garfield in the past might very well throw uh, their attention to Bretton Thwaites instead, because they have not only have a similar look, but a similar persona. Uh, so anyway, as I said, touching, very touching moments in this movie, and it did a very good job with emotions, uh, particularly, uh, I don't want to give anything away actually though, but um, there are these montages in the film which really do reach out to you and get you. Uh, they do make you feel. Uh, and I thought the film did a wonderful job of conveying the human condition and why it's so great to just feel alive. That said though, that's a very complex subject. Uh, you know, why it's important to be alive and uh, how that should color the rest of your, your uh, actions. And I think the movie, I, I can't speak for the book because I haven't read the book, but I think that the movie just isn't up to the task of doing anything more than broaching the subject. It's incapable of exploring it, let alone uh, giving some answers. Uh, and, and speaking of answers, this film, if 
you know, it's okay to watch and it's even somewhat engaging, but if you even just begin to pull at it a little, the entire thing falls apart. And a lot of it just simply does not make sense. Uh, for instance, they said that the giver, uh, Jeff Bridges' character, they're like, he is such a respected, you know, it's such a respected, important role in our society. Uh, you know, it's, uh, he's like a le living legend. Uh, and he is supposed to advise the elders on what to do. But the entire time I was watching this movie, Nobody ever listened to him. They were just like, shut up, Jeff Bridges. And so I was like, this is a horrible job. And if nobody cares about what he has to say or values his expertise, why does this position even exist? Why is he even saving these memories if nobody has any interest in you know, what they have to offer. Although speaking of the memories, I don't, uh, as nice as, and pleasant as they were, I don't understand what knowledge of sleds and sunsets uh, has to do with advising leaders on how to govern uh, and, and, and uh, deal with their people. Uh, it was almost kind of like, you know, uh, instead of, you know, advising uh, this society of leaders, it's like, you're going to advise Hallmark greeting cards, so you need to remember so that we know what to write. Uh, very much of the movie, a little bit, I think, you know, played like the Hallmark version of humanity, which is fine. There's a big audience for that, obviously. Uh, but the movie just, you know, it, there was just too much that just didn't work. Uh, for instance, also, you know, Jeff Bridges' character is able, supposed to be able to pass his memories on to whoever has this, like, birthmark. And, of course, uh, so does uh, Bretton Thwaites' character, and I don't want to give anything else away. But still, I was like, how is this happening? How are you able to do this? Uh, you know, the movie never explained it. Uh, and I was talking to somebody who did read the book, and they pointed out that in the book, this comes across as a much more low-tech society, uh, whereas in the film, they've decided to make it very high-tech. So I think when you have a high-tech situation, you, you know, to begin to take things very literally. You th things are supposed to have an answer. But when you go low-tech, I think there's more room to play around. Uh, and I think this would have worked better for this film. If I had looked at this and thought of it more as like an, uh, an Indian spirit walk or something, like those things from, you know, Native American cultures and, you know, the old days, you know, even the Middle Ages, uh, you know, mythology and the way that all works, um, I would have been more open to the way things were going down. But with this advanced society, I was just like, this makes no sense to me. Uh, and so what would I uh, say about the film? Um, I guess I would say that at the end of the day, they asked me to just accept too much. And so while I eventually did, I was like, fine, okay, I'll believe everything you tell me. Uh, and, and therefore, I was able to enjoy the ride, but it meant nothing because of that. The movie just did not hold together and just didn't stick with me. Again, though, I haven't read the book, uh, and I know the book sticks with quite a few people uh, who have read it, so I'd be curious for those of you who've read the book and seen the movie, what does the movie get wrong? Or maybe you don't think it gets anything wrong. Maybe you think it's, it's right on track and um, I'm just missing something about the property in general, the story. Uh, so write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in to my review, uh, and you can check out some more episodes right now.